In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A very, very warm welcome indeed to St. Paul's Church, New Southgate. Especially warm welcome if this is your first time, or if you've not been for a while. It's great to have you with us as we worship. And apologies for the, the slight darkness in, in this area. Do feel free to move if you need a bit more light. We've got one of our lights out just above you there. Today is Bible Sunday, a Sunday to celebrate the gift of Holy Scripture. And I'm very grateful to God for His Holy Word. When I run confirmation classes, I remind the children and the adults that the Bible is not just one book, but it's a library, a collection of 66 books which contain everything from poetry to politics, history to love stories. Everything's there. And so as we begin our worship, I'm hoping in my sermon to share with you something of, of an overview of the Bible, to help us to understand the, the complexity of the, of the text and to celebrate the gift that it is to us. As we gather, though, let us first pause in silence, aware of God's presence with us and the raw, painful needs of the world. My mind moves very much to think of the people of Gaza. And I join with many world leaders calling for a ceasefire, for compassion and a just solution to be found both for Israelis and Palestinians. So we pause in silence. The Word of God is living and active, so we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Lord, your Word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, your Word commands us, repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, your word assures us, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God Almighty, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour. Forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to be seated as we have our reading from Scripture. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament, and as Francis comes to, to read it, I'll just share a few words it comes from the book of Nehemiah. And as we will hear, the law of God is read to the peoples and their first reaction is to weep. Their first reaction is to weep and to be grieved at how they've fallen short. But thanks be to God because the priests comfort them and they remind them that although we sin, God's forgiveness and God's love is far, far greater. Here our reading. Thank you, Francis. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. 
and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy, Happy are, are they, they who walk, walk in, in the, the law of the Lord. How shall the young cleanse their way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. Happy are they who walk, walk in, the in the law of, of the, the Lord. Lord. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken great delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your views. My delight is on your statutes. I will not forget your word. Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. Thank you, Francis, for opening the scriptures to us. Try just to stand as we prepare to hear our gospel reading. So we sing together hymn number 380.
Jesus Christ according to St. Jesus said to his disciples, The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do have a seat. So we arrive on Bible Sunday. Bible Sunday. I want to share a few thoughts about the Scriptures to hopefully both help us get excited about the Bible, but also to help us understand the Bible because it is indeed a very rich tapestry of many different kinds of texts. But put simply, the Bible is simply a record of God's ongoing interactions through God's words and deeds with humanity. A record of God's powerful acts and God's self-revelation. The Bible has guided the church for almost 2,000 years and continues to guide her today. Every tradition of the church, every teaching of the church, must be rooted in the Bible's rich soil for it to bear fruit. The Bible is the Christian canon, and that word canon means measuring stick. Any claimed revelation about God must be measured against the biblical witness. The Bible keeps us rooted, and in particular, keeps us rooted in our relationship with Jesus Christ, the spring of water who wells up to eternal life. Celebrating the written word should always lead us to celebrate the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Saviour, and our friend. So how do we approach the Bible? How can it help us live as Christians? Well, to answer that, I want to talk about the theatre. I've not been to the theatre in a while, but one part I love in particular, and it's, it's scene changes. You know, where, where an act has been played out, and then the curtains close, and, and then you know there's an anticipation as the audience waits to see the curtains open again, and to see what the new scene looks and, and feels like. Well, there's a theologian, uh, an Anglican bishop, in fact, Tom Wright. Tom Wright might be known to many of you. He was the Bishop of Durham for a long while. And Tom Wright, he suggested that the Bible, the whole Bible, can be viewed as a single play with six acts. The Bible is a single play in six acts. And I believe that this way of looking at the Scriptures is a really helpful way for us to understand the wider arc, the meta-narrative across the whole of the scriptures. And I'm going to do my best to attempt to sketch this play in six acts. 
And it all begins with God. God is the main protagonist. And act one is creation. In the beginning, God created. From nothing to everything. To abundant life that we see around us. That's the first act. The act of creation. The curtains close. And the curtains open again as we zoom in to human beings. We have been created in God's image, and yet our choices pull societies apart. We hurt ourselves and we hurt others. We even hurt God himself through our rejection of him. In a word, sin begins to take over. So we come to Act 3. God intervenes, and God creates a chosen people, beginning with Abraham. God makes a promise that through this chosen people, all the peoples of the earth will be blessed. This act, you could call Israel, demonstrates the struggles of the people to keep faithful. And although there are some moments of light, the dark darkness of sin continues. Prophetic voices shout in the darkness that God has a plan for salvation, yet nothing is seen of it for 400 years. And so the curtain falls. The curtains open again. Act four, Jesus Christ. This is where everything has been leading up to this point. The arrival of Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem of Judea. Jesus challenges the power of sin through his teaching and through his miracles. And it's not long before he is recognized as who he is. God himself made flesh those in power reject Jesus, and he is hung on the cross. Sin appears to triumph once again, but then the resurrection follows. Jesus rises from the dead, light defeats darkness, and sin is dealt a mortal blow. A metaphorical bridge is built between God and and humanity. And Jesus promises through the Holy Spirit to be with those who embark on that journey of discipleship as we cross that bridge, across the divide that sin has made, from where we were to where we want to be, with God in that perfect unity, that perfect love, and that perfect reconciliation. So Act 4 comes to its end as Jesus ascends into heaven. And we very swiftly move into Act 5, the church. And that act, Act 5, is an ongoing act of the play. It's the part that you and I have been given to play. Right now, we are called to live it here and now. We have a part in this divine drama which has been unfolding and continues to unfold. The first four acts of the biblical play teach us who we are called to be and what we are called to do and how we're called to do it. That's the power and the gift of the Bible. That through the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Bible gives us understanding so that we know how to faithfully improvise the fifth act. Faithful improvisation means giving the Bible authority over our lives to act as a rule book, helping us to discern what is forbidden by God and what is life-giving and what is wise. The joy of the improvisation that we've been given as we live in this fifth act is to be creative and to be dynamic but it's also to act with consistency to what's gone before. Bishop Tom Wright calls it 
for us Christians to learn to speak and act with both innovation and consistency. I think that's a really wonderful framing about how we are called to live as Christians. To be a Christian is to innovate and yet hold to consistency. We are to creatively adapt as we encounter new things like new scientific discoveries and and advancements in things like AI, artificial intelligence. We just respond to world events, these new world events, these difficult, painful, traumatic world events. We're called to engage in new cultures. And while we do this, we're to hold on to consistency with all that has gone before, so that we may be faithful stewards, faithful disciples. After all, if you imagined a Shakespearean play where Shakespeare has carefully crafted and say halfway through the characters stop and maybe the really kind main character suddenly becomes selfish and rude and and horrible, becomes the, you know, the epitome of evil, that, that wouldn't make any sense for the play. Or if the people of God, now that we've received the Messiah, if we were to somehow start looking for a new hero to rescue us. The play wouldn't make sense. We have to remain faithful and consistent with all that has gone before. And so even as we write this, the fifth act, even as we write this fifth act, the final act, act six, has already been written. Because the Bible records what will happen at the end of the age. The Bible describes the final judgment and the final arrival of the new heaven and the new earth. The final act where Jesus will return and will wrap everything up. And so our living, our faithful improvisation has to have continuity with what's gone before. And then it must lead naturally into Act 6 and the fullness and the culmination of everything that God has done in salvation. So there you have it, the Bible. One play in six acts. Creation, sin, Israel, Jesus, the church, and the end of the age. What an incredible God we worship, who has been at work and has never stopped since God began creation. God has never stopped loving what he has made, never stopped creating a way back to healing and wholeness, both between brothers and sisters and between us and heaven. The Bible gives us both a wonderful freedom and a wonderful responsibility as we take our place and play our part in the glorious drama of salvation. It is a joyful invitation both to innovation and to consistency. We here at St Paul's, we've been reminded this year of the last 150 years And we have the names on the walls of a thousand names of a thousand families that have made us what we are. We must be faithful to the tradition that we have been given. It's been handed on to us. But at the same time, we take the tradition and we we innovate. We, as the ordinal teachers, we proclaim the gospel afresh to each generation to each person and in each new place. So to conclude, I just want to offer one application of this. I mean, in fact, two, because one application hopefully is, is fairly obvious. I hope when you next pick up your Bible, you will feel more able, more ready to open it, 
because it's not quite as scary when you think that it's one play with six acts and you can kind of get where we are in it as we look at those six movements. But the other application of all this is epitomised in what we did last Friday night. In the vicarage last Friday night, myself and a group of us from the church, we sat and prayed. We prayed with the Bible in one hand and a newspaper, the day's newspaper, in the other hand. Because the only way I can look and face full on the horrendous evils in our world today, not least the collective punishment of children and civilians in Gaza. The only way I can face the violence without despair and without escaping into fantasy is through holding on to the good news and the promises that God has made in the Holy Scriptures. It's the only way I can do it. It's the only way I can face the difficult traumas that, I mean, we, own, we face in our own lives as well, as well as seeing it on, on the TV screens. The promises of the Bible and the beautiful arc of God's saving grace from Genesis to Revelation, it gives me strength like nothing else. The Bible leads us firmly and powerfully to stand on the rock who is Jesus Christ our Lord, the one who suffered, the one who died, and the one who rose again for us, the one who fulfills every promise, who promises to Israelis and to Palestinians, the promises to all of us gathered here, that God will never forsake us, will always be with us, will love us no matter what, and the doorway to heaven is open. The doorway to heaven is open. That he promises forgiveness and mercy to those who come to him. That he will give us strength and empowerment to faithfully love consistently and innovatively every single human being on this planet. To him be the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Giving God thanks for the great history of salvation. Let's stand as we declare our faith in the words of the Creed. It can be found on page six, our profession of faith. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. 
as we gather together today, we pray now for the church, for the world, and for all people in all places according to their needs. We remember before you this morning all people of all nations, the poor, the wealthy, the weak, and the strong. And we give you thanks for the opportunity to offer our prayers today for all the things which concern us, the things for which we are grateful, and the things which seem important to each of us now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to remember today all those affected by the war in Ukraine as the world continues to watch in horror the ongoing fighting and loss of lives and loss of homes across the Ukraine. And we pray for all who seek to bring peace to that troubled area. And together with so many people around the world who watch in horror and disbelief, we bring before you the people affected by the current warfare in the Gaza region. As the conflict continues, we remember in our prayers here today those who have been killed, those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their homes, those who are scared, those who do not know what to do or where to go. And we pray for those who work to help the bereaved and the injured and the displaced. And we pray for those who work to bring peace. And we pray that a peaceful end may somehow yet still be achieved to the conflict and to the hatred and the breathtaking horrors we see and hear reported. And we hold in our prayers all those who suffer the shock of violence around the world in so many places. And we give thanks that here in this parish, whilst our lives may often produce challenges, we can still live in peace and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we pray for the unity and resilience of your whole church in every denomination and location as all congregations meet and worship together. We give you thanks that we have the support of one another within our church community. We pray for our church leaders, for Sarah, Bishop of London, and for all the clergy in our diocese and throughout the country, and for all members of the church community who continue to work to support your church. We pray especially for our church school, the children, the parents, the staff, and the governors and for students and parents everywhere as the half term ends and the school routines return. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And today we remember before you those who have been unwell. We remember especially Veronica Denny, Cecilia Tucker, Bernie Stodu, Prince Noel, George Teniola, Carol Hamilton, Edith Aruba, and Kevin Cochrane. And we pray for your support for all we know who are experiencing difficult times. We pray also for those in our own community and area who have recently died, especially where the death was unexpected or disturbing. And we remember before you their families and friends as they deal with their sadness. And we think also of those whose anniversary of death is at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for leaders and politicians around the world, in our own country and in our local area. And we once again give thanks for the health workers, doctors, nurses, carers, support workers throughout the very tested health service. And we bring before you our gratitude for their skills and resilience. And we remember all those who are struggling with illness and those who are in need of social care and financial support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks that we can join together today in church and online. We're grateful for our congregation, the young church, the Sunday school, those who join together here in person, those online. And finally, in a few moments of silence, 
we bring before you our own special concerns and needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Paul and all your saints, in fellowship with all the faithful departed, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Don, for leading us in our prayers of intercession. Let's stand as we share the peace with one another. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. We continue our service with hymn number 26.
So my sisters and brothers, as we gather spiritually around this altar, we bring with us all that is on our hearts, the thanksgiving for the scriptures, for Jesus Christ, for all the many benefits and blessings that he gives us. We hold to the pain and troubles of the world. When it comes to receiving communion, please do come forward. If it's your custom to receive, if you're here with us for the first time, please do receive this morning. If you'd rather receive a blessing, just come with your hands across your chest so that I know that's your desire. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is your eternal and creative word, through whom all things came into being, the Word made flesh who dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He fulfills the law and the prophets, dying for our sins and rising again in accordance with the Scriptures. He stands among us in his risen power, opening to us the living Word and making himself known in the breaking of the bread, therefore with angels and archangels, with all the great company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Heavenly Father, calling to mind his death on the cross and his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension into heaven, looking for his return in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. 
May the Spirit guide our innovation. Help us to be consistent, that we would be faithful and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup throughout the world, so that we in the company of St. Paul, Our Lady, St. Mary, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God is on a mission, and he has made us holy through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we fill our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Please do have a seat just for a moment, just for the, the final notices. And I'm very grateful to our Sunday School leaders, to Kim and Wendy. Um, and maybe the children afterwards, you can show me. If you made something in Sunday School, maybe after the service, you can show me at the back. Yeah? Show me what you've made. At the back of church, there's a list of names of the dearly departed, those who have, who have died, who we want remembered before God. And so please do write on that list the names of any loved ones you would like remembered uh, for next Sunday. Next Sunday is All Souls and All Saints Sunday, and so we will, we will read out that list of those who have been named. So please do write down the list, uh, any named of any of those you know of who have died. There's also a purple envelopes at the back for the flower fund, if you'd like to make a donation for the lilies and the flowers for All Saints and All Souls. This Thursday, we've got our usual 1030 Eucharist in the Lady Chapel, but we will be using the ancient rite of the Book of Common Prayer, the BCP. So please do join us if you're able on Thursday, 1030, for our BCP Eucharist. Our parish magazine, Vision, the deadline for articles is Thursday, so please do send them along to Kim and Wendy. If you're not sure what to write about, have a chat with them. I'm sure they would love to discuss with you what, what you might write. And particularly children, if you'd like to contribute something, this could be the first time you get something published in a magazine. So do have a think whether you'd like to put anything in our newsletter. And finally, it is two, at least two birthdays. I want to celebrate Hannah, whose birthday, I think, was it yesterday? Yeah, was yesterday. And I want to celebrate Demi, who, who's not here this morning, but it was his birthday as well. Do we have anyone else who's had a birthday in the last week? No? Well, let's, let's uh, maestro, if you would, Chris, let's uh, remember Hannah and Demi. Ready? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Please do stand for our final blessing as we go out into the world to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to share the scriptures with those who need them, and to build up our common life together. The Lord be with you. May Christ, who has nourished us with the living bread, himself, make you one in praise and glory and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.